In this video tutorial, I'm going to focus on a specific area of this chapter, which is exporting to XHTML out of InDesign CS5. To begin the chapter, I'm going to go to the mini bridge panel and I'm going to navigate to my ID10 lessons folder. And I'm going to go ahead and double click on the carad.indd file. Now, this particular document was designed as a print ad that might appear in a newspaper or magazine or even output as a flyer that will be passed around at different locations. I want to point out that InDesign CS5 is not, and I repeat, is not a web authoring program. However, what InDesign CS5 tries to do is streamline the process of repurposing content for both print and web professionals. The first thing I want to show you is that all the text that is in this document is based on styles. So if I go to my paragraph styles panel, you can see that I've got a cars style that has been created. And in addition, I've got some character styles that have been applied to different areas of this text. Utilizing styles inside of InDesign CS5 is paramount to getting something that you can work with when you export the XHTML document. In addition, it's important to understand that elements that are created in InDesign, such as frames and objects, such as starbursts, this shape, will not get exported in the resulting XHTML file. So keep that in mind when you're creating an element or an object that will be output to XHTML. So let's see how this works. I'm going to go to the File menu, and I'm going to choose Export 4. Dreamweaver. Dreamweaver, of course, being the web authoring program made by Adobe. On my desktop, I'm just going to create a folder called Car Add, and I'll get rid of the format for now. I'll just call this Car Add, and I'm going to go ahead and save this to my desktop. Now, before it actually saves the document, it provides me with this XHTML export options dialog box. So in the general category, it is asking me what I want to export. If I had an object selected, I could choose selection so that it only exports that selected object. For ordering, I can base it on the page layout. Or for added control, you can define XML structure in your InDesign document that will help you to define how that content is structured. For more information on XML, See Chapter 11 in the InDesign CS5 Digital Classroom book on using XML. If I've used any bulleted or numbered lists in my InDesign CS5 document, it can map them to standardized XHTML bulleted and numbered lists as well. If I click on the Images category, I can define how my images will be output as well. So we're going to leave this set to the defaults. We're going to leave our JPEG option set to high and the format to baseline. Now finally, but certainly not least important, is the advanced category. This is how I get additional control as far as how my content is going to be formatted. Namely, my text, although it's not limited to only text. The advanced section offers CSS and even JavaScript control of my output XHTML file. Now, if you're not familiar with CSS, CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets, and CSS is to the web what paragraph and character styles are to an InDesign document. However, you can find a lot of information about CSS online. The first thing I'm going to do in this example is I'm going to click the Embedded CSS Radio button. And what this allows me to do is embed CSS definitions inside of the exported XHTML document. And I'm actually going to tell it to include style definitions in the exported XHTML file. I'm going to go ahead and click Export. And it only takes but a few seconds. But if I navigate to my desktop, I can see that I now have a CarAd folder as well as an HTML file. 